Now that we have everything configured inside of the TriCaster, we're ready to take a look at an actual live production. Let's look at the switcher and the downstream keys available in the TriCaster. The live switcher interface is located here in the TriCaster, and the same controls exist here on the 450 control surface. All the controls that you need to run your live switch right at your fingertips. Now, as we look at the switcher interface itself, there's a program bus, a preview bus, and a utility row which can be delegated for four different uses. It can be an effects row, it can be the source selector for DSK1 or DSK2, and it can also be the selector for what's going out of the auxiliary video output. Now, over here we have our transition controls, and again the transition controls are here on the control surface, and over here we have the transitions themselves for the background, and then the transitions and the controls for both of our downstream keys that are available in the switcher. Now as we look at the switcher itself, you can see the four live inputs on the switcher. You can see that we have our two network inputs, the two digital disc recorders, the graphics player, a frame buffer, and then there are four virtual inputs, and we'll talk about those in just a little while. Now, of course, as you run a switch, you can run the switch either from the controls here on the interface or directly here from the control surface. And, of course, you can cut between two sources. Of course, you can do crossfades between those two sources as well. And the TriCaster features a variety of transitional type effects. Have things like trajectories. And right here on the control surface, you do have the ability to select from the effects that you currently have loaded. Now, of course, you can always pick up the mouse and you can click on any one of these effects to load that effect. But you also have the ability to use your selector knob right here. And by twisting the selector knob, you can choose the effect right from the control surface. Now, you also have the ability to control the speed at which these effects run. And right now, I'll just run the effect. And this is the default medium speed. So you have slow, medium, and fast available right here. And again, the slow speed is much slower, and the medium speed is a little faster, and fast is much quicker. Now, instead of having to grab the mouse to get to these presets, there is a rate knob here in the transition area on the control surface. And you can spin that, and that will give you a speed. It could be the preset, but you could go faster than fast, or slower than slow, or in between medium and fast. You can really dial in pretty much any speed that you want. But if you want to get back to the presets, this knob also acts like a button. And pushing the knob will cycle you through the presets that are available for the speed of the transition playback. Now you also have the ability to play these transitions forward and to play them in reverse. If you click on the effect that you want to use, there's a little gear right here, right over the top of your effects row for the actual transitions for the background. And you can see by clicking on that gear, you have the ability to set the effect up to run either forward or reverse. You also have the ability to run this effect in the ping pong mode. And this is going to change the direction of the effect each time you run it. First time you run it, runs forward. Second time you run it, runs in reverse. This is great for flying on and flying off an instant replay or something along those lines. Now, these are not global settings. These are effect by effect settings. So you can literally set some effects to run forward, some effects to run backward, and some effects to ping pong. And again, it's on an effect by effect basis that you can do that. Now, you can also load up other effects. There are a large variety of effects that come with the TriCaster. And again, if you want to replace one of the effects that's currently loaded, you simply click on an effect, click on the gear, and then go to the pop-up and say you want to browse. This is going to load a media browser showing you all of the effects that are available for use in the TriCaster. You can simply find the effect that you want to use. I'm going to come down here to trajectories, and we'll do a nice uh, stretch and fade up from the bottom here. And now that effect is ready to go. Now that seems to be running a little slow, so again, I hit my rate button here. Now I'm running a little bit faster. Hit the rate button again. Now I'm running at the fast speed. So again, very easy to adjust your effect speed from the rate knob right here. Now you can also adjust whether the effect is running forward or backward from the control surface as well. The selector knob that allows you to select which effect you want to use is also a button. And if you push down on that, it reverses the direction that the effect is currently running. And you can see on the interface that it changes from reverse 
to normal when you push that button. Now you also have a T-bar both in the interface and on the control surface to be able to run effects as well. You can left click and drag on the T-bar inside the interface or you can manually grab the T-bar on the control surface and manually control these effects. Now one of the interesting things about the T-bar is you do have the ability to delegate what it's going to do. Now there are also two downstream keys available. Right over here, down along the bottom, we're working with the transitions to go from preview to program, but there are also downstream keys right above it. Now these downstream keys can use any input coming into the TriCaster as a source. For instance, you can use the utility row to choose what source you want for each of the downstream keys. So you can click on DSK1, and right now we're using the graphics player for DSK1, and if we go to our graphics player, we have our title queued up there. And for downstream key two, we're using our frame buffer. Now the TriCaster has a series of frame buffers, and this is an area where you can copy an image or a title, and then point the downstream key at that. It separates it from the graphics player, so no matter what's selected in the graphics player, you always know what's going to come up on the downstream key because you have sent that to the frame buffer. And you can change the frame buffer at any time during your production. Let's go ahead and bring both of the DSKs up over program out. Now there are independent controls for the downstream keys here. There are also controls on the interface for both take and auto for each of the downstream keys. So you can either click on these with the mouse or again from the control surface, we can just hit take and we can bring both of those downstream keys up. Now again, you do have the ability to use transitions to bring those on and off the screen and it's the transitions listed right here. So you can again, all the same uh, techniques work that we use to load and manipulate the transitions down below, except for the fact when you're using a downstream key, your transitions are automatically always in ping pong mode because you're always going to fly that graphic on and then fly it back off with the same motion. So that happens automatically for you within the TriCaster. Now, one of the great things about any of the inputs in the TriCaster is that you can crop, scale, position, and rotate it. So we can take our overlay here, which is on DSK number two, and I've got a positioner area of the control surface right here in which I can select what it is that I want to modify, and I'm going to say I want to modify downstream key two. And now you have the ability to scale that down. Again, with the joystick, I'm turning the joystick like a knob, like a volume control, and that's scaling it. And then just pushing the joystick up into the corner, we also have the ability to rotate, so we can rotate that graphic around a little bit, and there's also a crop control there as well. You do have a reset button, so you can reset both of those variables, and again, the reset button only resets whatever is currently selected. So if you want to reset everything, you've got to hit reset for all of the variables. Now, if you want to be able to do those adjustments from the interface, you've got this little crosshair right here next to the gear, and if you bring that up, you have all of the same controls right here that you have on the control surface. So again, we can move this around, we can scale it. Now when you're working with the controls on the interface, I would recommend working with the icons, not trying to scale the individual uh, axes here. So just click right on the icon and you can just use the mouse. We can rotate that around a little bit. We can scale it up and down, and you have all the same controls right here on the interface that you have on main out. Now, it may be that you want to be able to set this up before you take it live, and you may already be live. So we can't set these graphics up size and scale them and so forth on program out, but that's okay, because all of this can be done on the preview monitor. So if we have DSK2 set up, yet we're not going to it yet. Notice if I grab the positioner, you still see it and it's only on preview. So I still have the ability now to scale this down and of course I can take preview and I can put the same thing on preview and program and now I'm seeing exactly where it's going to be when I bring that downstream key up. I can do my positioning and my rotation right here on preview and then we can bring that up and it's exactly where I want it to be the first time every time. Now you can do a lot more than just stills and titles with these downstream keys. You also have the ability to do full motion graphics by using the DDR as the source for the downstream key. Now here in the DDR, I have a video clip that has alpha channel in it. I'm gonna tell DSK1 to use DDR number one. Now I'm also gonna turn on autoplay and single in the DDR, and this is important. 
We only want the one clip to play. That's why we've turned single on. It'll just play the one clip and stop. And autoplay is turned on. The way autoplay works is anytime you switch to the DDR, it will automatically start playing. And when the clip is done, it'll automatically switch back to whatever's on preview and queue up the next clip. But this works even if you've attached that digital disc recorder to the downstream keyer. By activating the downstream keyer, if autoplay is on, it'll automatically start playing that DDR and your full motion graphic will appear right over the top of program out. Now this full motion graphic was created in Lightwave, but these graphics can be created in any package that can create a video clip with Alpha Channel. So if you already have a graphics package that you're currently using, that can easily be imported into the TriCaster and used in the TriCaster's workflow. As you look at the T-Bar, you'll see that there are four buttons above the T-Bar. And these buttons are on the control surface as well, but only the first three of them are here, and then the fourth fade to black is down here. These buttons allow you to delegate what the T-Bar is going to do. So, for instance, if it's on background, you're simply going to do a switch between whatever's on program and preview. That is our background layer. What's happening between program and preview and any transition that's happening is our background layer. Now, we'll go ahead and choose a trajectory here. So again, we're just going from preview to program. Now you can also delegate the T-bar or the auto button to run the downstream key. And we're going to go ahead and set our downstream keys back up. And what I want to show you is the preview monitor, as soon as I set this to downstream key number one, the preview monitor gives you a, a real-time look ahead preview as to what's going to happen. So if I only have the downstream key attached to the T-bar, when I pull it down, the downstream key is going to be brought up on program out. So if you look at preview, you can see that it's showing us exactly what's going to happen when we pull the T-bar. I pull the T-bar, the downstream key shows up. Now preview shows no downstream key because it's still selected and delegated, so if I was to run that T-bar again, it would take it off, a true look ahead preview. If you select downstream key two, you see the second downstream key. And again, pull the T-bar, it comes over program, now preview is empty, it's a true look ahead. You also have the ability to assign multiple things to the T-bar or the auto button. You can delegate multiple processes to happen in one use of the T-bar or the auto button. You can do this by pushing the first button and holding it and pressing the second button. So I held down DSK1 and pressed DSK2. Now they're both delegated to the T-bar. If you look at preview, you can see both of the DSKs on preview. We pull the T-bar, it's exactly what we get. Both of the DSKs coming in. If you want, you can do all three, the background, DSK1, and DSK2. Now you see on preview, the background video is going to change, and both of the DSKs will be brought up. It's always going to show you exactly what you're going to get when you pull the T-bar. The last button is fade to black, and you need to really understand what this button does. When you hit fade to black, and we pull down on the T-bar, it fades everything. It fades any graphics. I'll bring some graphics up here. And again, fade to black fades down all the downstream keys. Even the audio gets faded out completely. Now, this is a layer on top of everything else in your TriCaster layer. You've got background, then you've got DSK1, then you've got DSK2, and then fade to black over the top of the whole thing. So what you might do, now that you're faded to black, you're going to say, hey, I want to go back to a background switch, and I want to switch to what's on preview. Well, you can see that our preview is black, and the fade to black button is now blinking, because it knows that if I do this transition, it's not going to do anything. It's still going to be faded to black. Before I do a background transition, I have to click on fade to black, and I have to remove fade to black, then go back to my background switch, and continue working. So you've got four layers, your background layer, DSK1, DSK2, and then fade to black on top of the whole thing. And you've got the ability to delegate the T-bar or the auto button for any of those functions. You can also use any of the live inputs in the downstream keys. And this is great for doing a picture-in-picture -picture effect. For instance, uh, we're going to go ahead and select DSK1 as input number four. And now, I'm going to go ahead and put preview and program up. And again, we're going to go ahead and select DSK1 with our positioner. And as I start to position it, you can see there's input number four. I can scale it down, 
put it over here in the corner and rotate it around. And then again, when you activate that, it's exactly what you want the first time, every time. You also have the ability to customize the switcher interface to match your production needs. And you can relabel both the buttons on the switcher and the monitors that are associated with those channels of the switcher. On any button on the switcher, you can right click and select rename. And you get two options, the option to rename the monitor and the option to rename the button. So you have a lot more room on the monitor. Again, if I wanted to put Kiki's camera, Kiki camera on the preview monitor, and I'm going to go ahead and rename the button just as Kiki. Now you can see that the button is labeled Kiki. The monitor here is labeled Kiki's camera. And this has also been relabeled on our multi viewer. And if you go into one of our virtual input setups where there's another switcher, it's also been renamed in this switcher. So the renaming of any of the buttons or any of the monitors within the interface is propagated throughout the entire interface automatically. Some of the functions that you can do here from the control surface are also available as keyboard shortcuts on the keyboard. The space bar is an auto button, the enter key is the take button, and so forth. Now that's really nice, but if you're using a control surface, you may not want to have those active. You could inadvertently hit a button with space bar or something like that on the keyboard during the fast-paced live switch, and it could give you an undesirable result. So there is a way to disable the keyboard shortcuts, yet keep the keyboard active. You may need the keyboard to be able to type things in, to change title templates, anything like that, but you don't want to have those keyboard shortcuts active. To do that, we're going to go to the little gear that's in the upper right hand corner of the right hand tab module area, right here. We're going to click on that gear, and all the way down at the bottom, we have enable keyboard shortcuts, and right now there's a check mark by it. I'm going to click on that, and now if we look at it again, you'll see that the check mark is gone. So now all the keyboard shortcuts are disabled. You can still use the keyboard to type, but you're not going to make a mistake and do something disruptive to the switch accidentally.